So this is how to wire up your baby A with both an ELRS receiver and a GPS receiver. I bought my baby ape with an ELRS receiver already installed, but I figured why not include it, because if you want to set up your own, this might be helpful. So first we have to set up both power and ground. We have to connect the 5 volt pad to this plus pad here. Then we have to solder the ground to this ground pad. And then we have to connect receiver and transmitter. And the important thing here is that these two pads always have to be crossed, which means we have to connect the TX1 pad on the flight controller with the RX1 pad on the receiver. And then we have to connect the TX pad on the receiver with the RX1 pad on the flight controller. Next, we do the same thing for GPS. I use the exactly same pads for power and ground, which means both of them have two cables attached to them. Ground is the right pad here. Number one. Number two. Now we have the RX patch and the TX patch and RX2 is easy. This is our RX2 pad, which goes to the TX pad. And now it gets a little bit complicated because our TX2 pad is up here and you can see it's already taken up by the flight controller. So we have to remove this wire here just doesn't exist anymore and have to reconnect that to this S5 labeled pad here. So this one goes to here now. And now we have a free TX2 pad, which we can wire to the RX pad on the GPS. That goes here. <laughs> And this is how you wire the thing. Over for the GPS, you can use any one you like. The M10 GPS series are supposed to connect faster to satellites. And the other thing is, go for GPS that doesn't feature a compass or a barometer, because, well, the baby ape doesn't have any pads to support these anyway. So it's just that weight and extra money. <laughs> so. Let's do the beta flight setup. At first, you should update to at least beta flight version 4.5. I made a video about, about that, but I forgot something very important. The important thing is you have to go to con your configuration tab and you have to adjust the pit loop frequency to a maximum of 4 kHz. Because the thing is, your CPU load will be way too high on the quad and it will behave erratical or it won't arm at all. If you have a CPU load from 60 or 70% on the bench already, yeah, things won't work. Let's put it like that. <laughs> now set up the ports. I will skip connecting ELRS. There are a ton of tutorials. Maybe I will make my, my own sometimes. So UART1 or RX and TX1 are the ones that are connected to ELIS. So the only thing we have to do here is to select the serial RX slider. Then we have to go to the receiver tab and put our receiver to serial via UART and to crossfire. Back to the ports tab, UART2 is GPS. So we select sensor input GPS and select the manual board red. You can use the one that is labeled on your GPS or you can leave it at auto. The last part is our soft serial pad, which is connected to our video transmitter. Usually all you have to do is to select VTX Smart Audio if you're using the stock one. I upgraded mine to a Zeus Nano video transmitter, mostly because I wanted to change the antenna and the entire port for the antenna came loose from the board, which was a bit of a problem. Mine doesn't run on this Smart Audio protocol, but it runs on this tramp protocol, so I had to change that. 
The new thing you have going now is this GPS tab. As you can see, GPS is connected. I'm detecting some satellites, but it's still red, which means it's I don't have a fix right now, which doesn't surprise me too much as I'm completely indoors. <laughs> yes. Use auto configuration, use Galileo, use auto detect for the ground assistance type, and use set a home point once, which basically means if you arm the quad, the home point that is set will be used. And if you disarm the quad, for some reasons, maybe because you land landed somewhere, it won't set a new home port there. Which means if you hit GPS return, it will return to your launch point. Another important step is to go to your configuration steps and select GPS for navigation and telemetry. I'm not sure if this is already selected usually or if you have to do it manually, but check that. And the last point is to select your failsafe behavior. Set mine to GPS rescue, current altitude, initial climb of 30 meters. Yes, you can get my data from here more or less. And that should work. I'm not giving any guarantees. The next thing you can do is to Fund. Ah, yes. Select a GPS rescue switch on your radio. For our last step, we, took, we go to the OSD tab and we set up all the data we see in our goggles. It's important not to put everything too far to the sides because it might be invisible. I want to know my altitude. I want to know the number of satellites I'm connected to. I want to know my speed. I want to know my link quality low voltage warnings, want to have an idea how much battery I have left, the mode in, and important, my direction home and the distance to my home point. But you can set it up however you like it. <laughs> a, a thing that's really nice about the GPS setup we chose is that GPS is connected to power by USB. So if you're out in the field, you can just plug in your power bank or yeah, your power bank into your USB port GPS will start looking for a fix and you can get your GPS fix before plugging in your flight battery. This is nice because components such as your VTX are not running hot because they are not connected to the USB port and yeah, it helps you save a little bit of battery time. The important thing is to plug in the LiPo before unplugging the power bank. Yeah, and that's how I set up my GPS. As always, have fun flying!